Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of um, Lead Code Daily Challenge um, in August. So the problem says we get a word ladder too, um, and let's go into the details here. So we have um, a transformation sequence from begin word to end word using a dictionary word list. Um, and word list is um, we want to construct a sequence like this that starts with begin words and then goes to another string, another one, all the way until sk. And all of these intermediary string are, strings are in word list. Um, and every adjacent pair of words differ by just a single letter. So doing this sequence, all of these adjacent words need to differ only by one letter. So s1 and s2 need to differ by one letter. Um, S2 and S3, one letter again until the end. <coughs> um, and all of the intermediary strings are in word list, but begin word doesn't need to be there. Um, and then the last string in the sequence needs to be equal to end word. And what do we want to do? We want to return all the shortest transformation sequences that start from begin word and end word. And so these are multiple shortest sequences. Um, and we get begin word and end word as parameter. And we return empty list if there is no such a path from begin word to end word. Okay? And we, we need to return a path like this. And this is for a sequence like this, right? So that's the problem. Now, all shortest transformation sequences, this is sort of all shortest path problem, essentially. Um, so if you take a look at this example here with hit and the end word is cog and this is the list of words, what do we do? We go from hit to hat because this is just changing one letter and the hat is in the words list. Then we go to that changing just D <coughs> and that's in the word list as well. We go to dog changing just um, this letter G um, and then that's in the list and then we go to cog changing this letter c alone and that way we are that's a shorter sequence right there of length four but we have multiple here because we can go hit hard with one letter um here with o and then here with one letter with l um and then one letter replacing t with j to get a log and then c to get cog and this is log and lot are in the word list as well so this entire this sequence is valid and it's one of the shortest sequences because we have five similar to the first one okay so that's kind of the problem here and if there is no path like in the second example we just return an empty list okay this is because the second example the end world is not in the world list um yeah so that's pretty much our problem so you can see the word list can be long um, and we are guaranteed that they are different, the begin and end words are different. So let's see how we can solve it. Um, okay, so how can we solve this problem? So the main idea here to think about is that what we want is all the shortest transformation sequences. So that's what we are looking for. So what we can do is just use BFF, BFS to get all the shortest path. And basically what we can do is in the first pass, um, we can just record for each shortest path. Um, we can record the for, for each shortest path, for each node of it, record the predecessor. Okay. And then in the second pass, what we will do is So this is first pass. In the second pass, what we can do is um, just go through the predecessor starting from the end word. So start from end word. So that's the destination. And go through all paths, basically using every time. So we'll start with end word and we'll say what are its predecessors. So record its predecessors. So S, because for each node there may be multiple because we may have multiple shortest uh, um, paths here. So we start from the end word, we check what are its predecessors. For all of these predecessors, what are the 
the predecessors of that, right? And these are predecessors for shortest sequences. And so, and then we collect all of these paths and we return them using predecessors of each node, right? So this one, it's like similar to when you are using dynamic programming and you collected the parents of, um, uh, of each value of, of each state, then you can do one pass to go through the state to obtain them. For example, in the edit distance with string, that's what you do. You, you record for each state, you record the parent, and then at the end you can go through uh, the parent of the last state, the parent of that, the parent of that, until you collect all the, pa all the parent. That way you get the path. So that's the same thing that we will be doing here. Um, and then uh, a couple of details here for the pers first path for our BFS is that neighbors are basically um, words in word list right that differs just by one letter um, and so we can check this using just checking the difference between the node and all the remaining word list that we haven't visited yet um, uh, is one letter right so here for example if you take a look sorry um, so every adjacent part of words differ by a single letter, right? So that's what what we have here. And so here, so each time we can go through non-visited words in word list, right? Non-visited words, and check if differ by one letter, then it's a neighbor. Uh, so for this, we can either decide to use a visited set, right? to mark those that we are visited and then we can make sure that it's that the node we are looking at hasn't been visited or we can just have a set of the remaining words that gets initialized to all the word list values and each time we visit a node we just remain uh, remove it so on visit of a node we can just remove that node from the remaining that way we don't visit it again we don't check it again because in the for the nodes uh, neighbors we just check remaining <laughs> so that's um, one thing for the neighbors detail the other detail here is to compute the shortest path what we are going to do is some sort of similar to dextra right where we will be relaxing nodes or relaxing edges, whatever you call it, relaxing distances, right? Because we are looking for shortest paths, right? And so we will need a distance map, right? Uh, that just says a distance from a node. Uh, distance from the source to, the, uh, to that node is x value, right? And so when we are visiting a node, uh, a neighbor, we want to check if using this node that we are tr processing, if that gives us a better distance. If it is, then we set it and we append the neighbor to the to the queue, right? Um, and so th that's pretty much like the global picture of what we are trying to do here. Uh, so now let's code it up and it will get more clear as we code it. So the first thing we need is we need, as we said, the remaining list here of words. Instead of having a visited set and then checking if we visited, we'll just start with all the words and each time we visit one of them we remove it and so we to do that we are going to have that be a set of word list right and then we have a we need a, a couple of things we need the predecessors which is going to be a map uh, but also for each key the value is going to be a list because a node may have multiple predecessors like let's say for example um, maybe arriving at hat. Well, we could have arrived from hit, right, by changing just the I letter, or maybe we arrived with uh, dot and then just change it D, right? So in this case, hat has, has two predecessors. It even may have another third one lot and where we change it L, right? So it can have multiple predecessors. So that's why we are going to start with a default dictionary that has default value of list. Um, and now we will, uh, since we are doing BFS here, sort of BFS, so we would have our DQ with um, initially it should be the source node, which is begin word, right? And now we will need to do our loop here. One thing we need is what we said here distance map, right? Because to record the distance so we can know if we 
if the new path is better than what we visited before so what we will do here is so this is while the queue is not empty so we need a distance map and so what should we start with the source again what is the distance from source to source uh, just a zero right so distance is represent distance of a node uh, from begin world to a node and that node is the key of the map right and so normal bfs we need to pop and marking the node at marking mark node as visited so instead of doing visited that add what we said is we are going to use this remaining so we need to remove node now one detail is um, to think about here is that begin world is not in world list that's something that the problem says um, somewhere here yep begin world is not in the world list so for begin world we shouldn't remove it because it's not there so what we do here is we need to remove to check if this node is different than begin world first only then we remove it okay and now we traverse the neighbors neighbors of node so how do we do that well a candidate neighbor is whatever is not visited yet from the world set right so let's do that here but when do we know it's a neighbor what the problem says here is that um, each is just adjacent pair of words differ by a single letter so only if they differ by a single letter that we can say that they are neighbors so we are going to have a function here to check that so if so let's call it neighbor, our neighbors of node and candidates then we we can consider it a neighbor so to make that super clear i will rename it to neighbor here um, and assign candidates only if they are neighbors so here we'll write our function our neighbors later but what it does is just checks that um, w1 and w2 differ by one letter okay um, and we'll write this function so let's just mark it as to do for now um, okay so now that we have the neighbor what we need to do is now it's where we check to relax can uh, distance and then we will assign predecessors right and then we will add if we should to the queue a new node right so we'll do all of these um, and so the first thing we need to do is check if we have either a node that has not vis visited yet if neighbor is not visited yet or so let's mark this neighbor not visited yet or this is a better path or through node uh, path through node is a better path for neighbor if it's a better path then we need to relax the distance and use the new path right and so for neighbor not visited well that's just if it's not in distance map that means it's not visited right we haven't visited yet yet so if neighbor not in uh, distance map that means it's not visited yet or the path through this node is actually better than whatever we had in distance before so whatever was the previous distance for neighbor if that's bigger right then the new path the current path is actually just distance to this node plus one right because node to neighbor so we need to account for that if this is bigger that means we found a better path so that's the condition we are doing here let's just make sure this is written down here so in that case what do we need to do we need to update the distance right assign the predecessor right because now we are going through node this means we decided to go through node so um, and then add to queue right add neighbor to queue because we want to go through that node and try to find paths to the end world right so add to neighbor uh, add neighbor to queue right. okay so let's 
do that. So first updating the distance, that means distance of neighbor is now equal to the new distance through node, right? Plus one, that's the new distance. And then we need to the assign the predecessor. So let's call it. So what's the node that its predecessor is node, right? What's the, so the predecessor of neighbor. So now what this would mean here, what this means here is that basically we have node with an edge towards neighbor. That's what this means, right? So that means the predecessor of neighbor is contains node, right? So let's just add that. So that means neighbor append node here. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, and then we need to add the neighbor to the queue so so that we can go to its neighbors and continue our BFS. So append neighbor. Okay, so now um, that's one condition. The other condition is what if the distance is the same, right? Distance is equal. So in that case, since we are looking for all the shortest path, that means going to neighbor through this node is another shortest path, similar to the first one that we had initially set in distance neighbor. So we need to account for it. So let's do that. So else if distance of node plus one is equal, let's actually just copy it since I have it here. So another shortest path through neighbor, through node, potentially. Uh, right. But before being able to do distance of neighbor, we need to make sure it's in the distance array. So, so just to make sure that this works in distance and that. Okay, so in this case, the only thing we need to do is this, add the predecessor. We don't need to add it to the queue because the previous iteration that said distance neighbor already did that, right? Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it for our while loop here for the B BFS, that's all we need. Now one thing we can do to exit earlier is if the end world, we didn't reach the end world, then we can exit because there is no path. Uh, how do we know we didn't reach end world? Well, if it's not in distance, that means we never reached it. So we can just do that here. If end world not in distance, then we can return an empty list. Okay, now let's do the second pass. So this was only the first pass of this, which is um, record for each shortest path, um, each node, its predecessors, what are its predecessors. Now for the second pass, we will start from end world here. So this is our second pass. Well, we'll start from end world and go through all the paths using predecessors uh, map to get the the entire short path. Um, so to do that, we need to have first an array with our answer to record all our paths here. And that's what we are going to return at the end. And now we need to define our function. Let's call it calculate path. Okay. And we need to call it, right? So calculate path. What should we call it with? Um, well, we want to start from the end world and using predecessor go all the way up to the start or uh, begin world, right? So let's path end, pass end world. So first that's the, the node and each time we'll go up and then the path starts with end world, right? Naturally. Um, and one thing you note here is the path we'll construct is like this end world to some s to sk minus one all the way to s1 all the way to begin world. And it will be like a, a list of end world, sk, sk minus one. So to get it in the right order, starting from begin going like this, we need to reverse it when we add it. So just keep that in mind. And when do we know we are done? So this would be a path that we collect. When do, no, we, do we know we are done is when we reach the begin world. So we go all the way up with predecessors until we get to the begin world. So if it's equal to begin world. That means we can, we are done and we can add our path. But since we need to, we need to reverse it to get this order, right? So let's reverse it here. And with that, we can return. Okay. Um, now after doing this, 
uh, we need to go through the predecessors in predecessors map of uh, this node here right and for each of them we'll go up which means we'll do calc path of predecessor and then of path plus since we just visited uh, this value here right and that's pretty much it so we just recurse going all the way up so we go and the world sk and then we pass sk as the node so that we can go to sk minus one you get the idea there um and that should be it pretty much for the second path pass um one thing we didn't implement yet is if those two are neighbors so let's just do that so what we need to implement here is that we need something to count the different letters and then we just go through and make sure there is the number count the different letters right so if w1 at i is different right then we need to count it and as soon as we reach the count bigger than one we can return false and then here we can return count equal to one okay so differ by one letter and th that way we can know it's they are neighbors now let me just this naming correct okay um and that's pretty much our algorithm it's a little bit long but just visualize it in terms of this is the first pass this is the second pass this one finds the predecessors for the shortest path and this one just computes them um so if we run this uh okay there is just semicolon missing uh okay it looks like the way this is constructed is not good the paths here um so this is because let's see if it's from predecessors map No, predecessor seems good. So it's from the way we are doing uh, pending into the path here. Um, so we start with end world as our path. And then we take the path that we have and then add predecessor. Then we go through the predecessors of the node. All right, that seems all right. Um, Um, okay, so the problem is actually just that we are passing path here instead of returning the overall list of paths. So let's just return that. Let's submit. Cool, so that passes test cases. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Um, I think it's, it's a cool problem. Um, if you do it differently, um, there is, yeah, there are a lot of variations that you may get TLE with, uh, but this one should work fine. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.